Hi everyone! So here we are at another uh, live. Today we're coming back to some fun colors with neon powders and uh, or neon pigments and additionally we're going to enhance them with um, texture gel we're going to apply here clear and build this glass um, uh, look so i'm going to be working here on the black background i really love neons over the black but of course you can do it on any color you would like i mean probably white or some lighter color or dark so what we're gonna do here is um, I'm gonna first on show on the first nail how I would prepare the background that would be really quick I'm just gonna take black gel polish and apply um, one thin layer cure it for, for um, 60 seconds and then apply matte gel top coat and buff the surface um, why we have to do that is because uh, we want to prevent pigments neon pigments that I have already here we want to prevent them from adhering to our um, matte top coat so um, the buffing is what helps so now I'm going to prepare here matte gel top coat and apply it on the entire nail. I have already also a 240 buffer ready. And now let's apply matte gel top coat, cure it for 60 seconds, and then we are ready to go. I have other nails already prepared so I don't have to do that it was just to show you the first nail just in case if someone doesn't know that this is a good way to prevent neon powders from adhering to the background so let's give it um, another 20 seconds and then we're gonna buff it okay so um, I'm gonna be using here today also white gel polish this is what um, I'm gonna create with. Uh, I'm gonna use to create the design. Okay, here this is perfectly cured now. Now, now we're gonna buff it. So again, I'm using 240, and I'm buffing the surface of the top coat, of gel top coat, matte top coat, uh, because I want to prevent that the chrome, sorry, not chrome, that the um, uh, neon pigments adhere to it or stain it. Of course, we could also use the shiny gel top coat. That's totally up to you. Depends on your gel top coat, whatever works better for you. Okay. And now we are ready to go. So, um, as my gel, I'm going to be using uh, white gel from Charisma. I'm going to put some here on the side. I'm going to do some parts of the design with a dotting tool, brush, or we could even use the brush directly from here if it's a wider application if it's just a line um, then it's easy so let's uh, let me just make sure that this is perfectly clean I'm just gonna give it a little wipe with cleanser okay and now I would like to start with an easy decoration that is more like this abstract kind of wavy lines and whatever brush you want to use it doesn't have to be super thin maybe something longer you can use that or actually how about we use one part of the uh, we create one part of the design with brush directly from the gel polish just to show how easy and quick we can do it so i'm going to remove the excessive amount of gel from the brush and now however you want the them the design to move you're going to create the line either it's a straight lines diagonal or wavy so if i would like to make a wavy line that comes from here maybe a little bit wider so i'm going to press my brush and then it goes a little bit more tapered so i'm going to reducing the reduce the pressure of the brush 
then maybe even make like a little curve at the end but again this is just an example i'm just playing around and if you see that it's not perfect don't worry you're just going to take your liner brush and make um, the application more uh, perfect on the sides adjust it and that's it now i don't want to have just one stripe so i'm going to take now with the liner brush another portion of gel and add another line next to it so this line will be kind of following the first one and i want to make it a little bit thicker at the base so you see like i'm applying a bit wider line here and then pull gently along the first shape with thinner and thinner and thinner line but again this is just um, depending on what you want to do i'm going to do another one maybe here just so we have a little bit more things happening on the nail okay maybe here i'm going to add more thickness just so we have more color okay so now once you decide that this is enough we're going to cure it we're going to cure it for 30 seconds and then play with um, neon powders so um in case if you feel like you want to do more of the signs at the same time well how about we create all of the white backgrounds first and then we're gonna put all of the powders on top of them so I think this will make the process much quicker and also this is how you would do on the client so let's go ahead and make for example the um, the flower design then we're gonna do the low part as well if you wanted to make a flower design like this you would take probably dotting tool and maybe it would be better if you make a little dot to show yourself what is the center of the flower and now you're gonna do five dots in an even distance from each other and also in a small distance from the central dot i put them about two three millimeters from the center so um, i will have space now to pull them gently or push them gently um, and create like a drop shape you could use your your brush if you want to make it more precise and thin and in this way we create like a little drop shape or if you are more in a rush and you just want to use your dotting tool we can do that as well so it just depends up to you okay so let's do it with the dotting tool if you have a thin dotting tool you can do it directly uh, like this and you can also um, enlarge those dots and make them a little bit closer to each other we don't want them to be too far away uh, we want to have a thin um, line of black in dividing all of those petals but if there's too much black then it will look funny now once you created the simple pedal now you can play again you can extend them a little bit in opposite direction and change it into more pointy or longer petal we're just playing around here to make give a shape to this flower so let me put this here okay we're just preparing the base and dotting tool is really mm, nice to to use for this work because we don't have to use certain pressure we practically massage the surface of the nail with um, with the dotting tool and it allows us to make a nice smooth application okay so i think this is enough i'm just checking if they are all similar size i don't want them to be too tiny because then it won't be fun to make the texture so make sure they are not too small okay and now let's cure it together with the other one okay this one is cured the first one is cured okay let's put it on the side let's do the third one the third one will be the um like the little part effect super easy quick to do how are we gonna do it well we did a little part the other day the difference is that this one will be a little bit bigger 
uh, smaller you go, of course, more work you have. So I'm going to simply make um, diagonal application either to the left or to the right and make like a little C shape. So let's say I would like to make one here. And then in front of that open little C, I will make kind of like a little dot of a, or a line. And then I will make a series of those going um, either to the left or to the right. That's really up to you. Since this one is going to the left, I'm going to make this one to the uh, going in the right direction. And I would like to concentrate bigger elements more in the center. And more I go um, down and to the sides, I will be using smaller elements like this. Now, every time we do it, it can be a bit different shape like one little C shape or little dots next to each other, like in a triangle, one, two, three. So we have a lot of options for the low part effect. Let's just make sure that they don't touch between each other and that we can clearly see what we, uh, what we are looking at. Okay, so now let's finish here those few more. And since we are doing texture, I don't wanna make this too small because then it will be more difficult um, to apply on top of it with the texture gel. So I'm going to do a few more. Again, those are just little C shapes with a little dot um, in front of it. Sometimes we can just make like a little, little dot just to fill in that space. And this makes the decoration more complete. So now. This is done, let's cure it. This is just the background and it could be anything like even tiger, leopard, uh, we don't have leopard, um, zebra, whatever lines you would like to do. Okay, so this is curing. The, in the meantime, the flower cured. So um, now let's go ahead and play with pigments. In the meantime, the, uh, the other design is is curing in the lamp. I'm going to prepare here my paper. It helps me to blend colors. And again, like we were explained a few days ago on the other demo, you can either use that fluffy open brush or one of those brushes. In the end, it's uh, whatever you find more easy. And here it is, our nail. I'm going to start from those lines and I would like to uh, fit here all, um, I, will, I will try at least, fit here all six colors so i like to start from the lighter color and i will take a little bit of yellow on the tip of the brush okay and put for example a little bit yellow on the center part then clean my brush take a little bit of orange orange should be next to the yellow they look well together they blend well together and i'm kind of like tapping with the orange around the yellow and blending this orange into into the yellow now i'm going to clean my brush again and take a small amount of pink again more on the front of the tool of the of this ombre brush i'm reducing the excessive amount of pigment on the paper so it's not too much and now i'm going um around the orange and again gently tap 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 and then flip the brush and now pink is looking down and tapping around the orange small amount of pink after we applied pink the next color we can use is um, violet so i'm going to use here a little bit of violet again on the tip so it can go behind the pink and the clean part of the tool is what is helping us to blend the color into the previous one now after the pink you should use the, um, the violet because violet would be nice transition into the blue and then from the blue to the green so they will all have to use nice and look nice and peaceful the only thing is that sometimes i notice that if i use directly blue into um, uh, violet into blue sometimes it's a little bit aggressive line so what i like to do is mix 
on the side here, blue and purple, just a little bit. So it's not such a pure light blue, but it's slightly like stained with the violet. And that helps me to blend that um, color better, but blend those two colors easier. Okay, and I still have space here for green. So I'm cleaning my brush here on the on the paper and now taking a small amount of green on the top, leave the excessive amount, and now place the green behind the blue. Okay, so we have a fun, colorful nail. And we could have started all right also the wood green on the center. And now we're just gonna remove all of the excessive amount of the pigment. And this one is ready for the texture. So in the meantime, let's take care of this one very quickly. And here maybe I would like to start, um, we use those uh, more um, flower-like colors. So maybe I will start from uh, yellow on the outside. Small amount of yellow on the tip of the brush again. Okay, and then tap all of the outside of the petals. See how I'm circling with the tip of the brush around? Kind of like tapped it. Then clean the brush quickly. Take a small amount of orange, not pink. Pink would be too drastic difference. And now I'm directing the orange towards the center so the orange and yellow can blend. The clean part again is what helps me to create a better blending between orange and yellow. Clean quickly the brush here and take a tiny bit of pink. And again, put it towards the center and work between pink and orange. Tap gently in a circle. And I would like to finish this flower in the very, with the, in the very center with violet. So I'm gonna take a small amount of violet, tap the excessive amount, and now place it only in the very center after we applied pink. We shouldn't put pink directly next to the orange. The pink is really important transition color. And now we can remove all of that excessive amount of pigment and also this flower is ready for the texture. Now the last one, and then we play with the texture gel, will be um, this one here. And honestly, you can play with whatever colors you want here. I'm gonna maybe use here, um, why not? Some orange and yellow and green, just to go in a little bit different direction. I'm gonna use those colors here. Maybe some blue, just to make it fun. Okay, so I know that the yellow color is a nice transition color between orange and green. So it is safe to put it somewhere maybe here. Then clean the brush and maybe take a little bit of orange and put it from this side. Oh, I might actually have space for the pink. And then go with the green to the other side. Let's make sure that between colors, like when you're switching from green to uh, orange, from orange to green, that you clean the brush well. Otherwise, green and orange together on the brush will give a very unpleasant color. And blue looks very well next to the green, so that's why I'm now using some blue. And since there's still some space left, why not use some pink? Okay, so now we have fun colors all present on the nail. Let's remove the residue with soft, delicate brush. And now we are ready for the texture. So, to create the texture here, I would strongly advise you first uh, um, seal everything with uh, your gel top coat. Okay. Um, just to make sure that if you didn't cover perfectly everything, the neon effect won't go away. So I'm going to seal now everything with matte gel top coat, unless you prefer shiny. But I find that when we have matte background and then shiny texture, 
this is what gives us a really cool look also if we just leave it as it is that's also really cool you could just put here uh, the rhinestone and the flower is ready okay so now this one here this one actually really like like this just the little part with neon look it's quite cool the same would be for like a tiger or zebra effect okay so now let's cure this for um, uh, 60 seconds I'm gonna do a little bit quicker but generally it should be 60 seconds and in the meantime I'm gonna prepare my texture gel so it's just a clear gel medium viscosity that is nice and shiny and doesn't have tacky layer after it cures I like to just cut the silver protector fold just the center so it doesn't spill outside and uh, it, it it just keeps helps me to keep it cleaner now i'm going to use a um, liner brush whatever liner brush you have it doesn't have to be super thin um, it can be just a traditional thin gel oh, sorry thin brush so now i think this will be the easiest one to start with it's um i love doing those abstract lines um, they are just so much fun to to work with maybe let me put this here so you can see it better Okay, and uh, what is important about this this uh, style is that there is not just one layer of gel. In the end, you will decide how tall you want your design, how much of the glass look you want to give, and I always do at least two layers. Okay, so this is when the fun things happen. So let's do it. I will take. Um, a nice portion here with gel like I want to scoop you see let me show you here I scoop like a nice portion of gel that's why you want a liner gel liner brush and you could even use like a longer liner brush okay so now you will move with them um, you, you will apply those lines moving along this design and it depends how wide you have that space you will do either two or even three. We'll see. I think I might, I should have done it thick, wider so I would have maybe three spaces. But okay, we'll see. Okay, I'm, so I'm starting from the left side and I'm going to follow the left shape. And more I go down, I have a little bit less and less gel, obviously. So if you feel like you would like to have a little bit more on the bottom, that's fine. Let's add, maybe not on the very beginning, but a little bit more here just to have it a little bit thicker also on the bottom but naturally because this line is shrinking if the line if the thickness of the gel is a little bit thinner towards the end that's great now it depends from how confident you are in what you're doing and what is the temperature in your room and what gel you are using I think I'm confident to put the second line immediately at once without flash curing but in case if you're using a more fluid gel, more liquid, you might consider flash curing in between those two lines. I did it very quickly. It's nice and cold here. It's about 70 degrees and the viscosity is, as you can see, like a very medium, not too liquid. And in this way, I knew that I can apply the second lane and it won't connect with the first one. Now, let's do the same on those side lines. And then once we cure everything, we will do the second lane, the second layer, sorry. But it is important that it's not perfectly covering the first one. It will be kind of on the side. And this is when more interesting look happens. So um, I don't want to make this line too thick. So let me just reduce a little bit the amount of gel on the brush. Let's show how much I have. Okay, it's nice and charged, but not too much. And now I start again from the top and I will follow this neon line. I don't want clear to spill on the black matte um, surface underneath because then it kind of ruins the effect. And then if you feel confident, you can do it immediately on the second line, do it one time. If not, flash cure it for five seconds and that's totally fine. Okay, so I'm following the first, it's uh, the design underneath. Now, flash cure it or cure it. Unless you have more designs, more lines to file, then fill, then we can flash cure it for five seconds. But since I would like to now do the second layer, 
it's probably better to cure it at least what like one minute um, and then do the second layer that will give much more glass like look and more dimensional one layer only looks cool it's already changed so much the way how the design looks it was just looking cute but now it looks more particular so now let's take it to another le level so i'm going to take another nice portion of gel with the brush you see here like i'm dipping entire brush in the gel and pulling uh, out and now we're going to start again from the top but don't cover it perfectly in the center maybe start like kind of like to the right side of the first layer so what will happen is you have texture over the texture oops i messed it up um i kind of entered on the other line so how can we solve this situation let's maybe take a silicon tool and try to divide those two lanes okay this is how we would fix it okay so now just because i messed it up i'm gonna flash cure it before it's continue flooding because that could happen okay and then we're gonna make sure that now when i'm doing the second line i don't do the same mistake my brush kind of cheated on me and moved to the right side so now i'm gonna make sure that i control this movement here and do the second lane not in the center of this line but just a little bit to the right so i can see both layers and I'm not sure how much um, it shows in the camera that that there are two layers, but when you see it in, with your own eyes, it's, it shows you like this a bit more particular textured way we look. And then it's up to you and your client how tall you want it. What I love about this style is it doesn't bother you. Like it's smooth, it doesn't have sharp corners, it doesn't have sharp edges, and it's just, delicate and um, if you want to update or up, um, upgrade also this part you can add a little bit more maybe this one is on the side of the nail i'm going to leave it as it is and if you feel like you want to have more fun and add a third layer for example on one of them especially the central one you could why not um so uh, definitely it's good to have the second layer um, for more fun look and just remember they have to be flash cured or cured in between layers. Okay, so now we have something like this and I'm gonna put it to cure for two minutes. After I finish, I just wanna make sure that everything perfectly cured, that it stays shiny. This gel has no tacky layer, so I don't have to top coat it, but if case, if you would like, of course you could. Just make sure that if you do that, you don't use just a brush from the gel polish top coat or but use it maybe a small brush okay so now let's work on the flower on the flower it will be very very similar we want to practically cover what we did with uh, white gel polish and neon powders and um, to make it easy I like to put a ball of gel in the very center of um, the petal and I kind of like swirl it around and you feel if you feel confident to do more petals at the same time you can put another ball maybe not very close to the first petal but leave a little distance and then I'm gonna take a risk and put it also on this petal even if they are close to each other okay and just make a little bubble then reduce the excessive amount of gel on my brush and delicately with the tip of the brush push or pull the gel towards the tip of this petal and pull this bubble of gel towards the center of the flower but not too much you don't want to flood the center of the flower with too much gel because then it will just look heavy so let's keep the very center a little bit more empty so then you will have space to make to apply a little pearl or a rhinestone or whatever you would like to have in the center of um, the flower now once you do those three petals let's flash cure them for about five seconds 
I'm just gonna check before I do that if everything looks good, if we covered perfectly that entire shape of the petal. Now let's cure it for five seconds. The five seconds will be just enough to freeze that gel and um, uh, this will allow us to make the application of other two petals easy. So now this is flash cured. And now I'm gonna put two bubbles of gel on remaining two petals. So again, put the ball, circle around with the brush, take another little ball of gel and put it on the other petal, petal number five. Maybe this wasn't enough, let's take a little bit more. Okay. And again, make a little ball and reduce the amount of gel from the brush so we can have more precision. So you can pull gel towards the tip of your petal, towards each side to make it nice and rounded as the base is, and then very delicately pull it towards the base. Let's do the same thing on the other petal, push it to the tip, pull it in, push it to the side, to the left, to the right, Make sure they don't touch between with other petals. And now let's cure it for about uh, one minute. And then we're gonna do the second layer. Again, the second layer is what will make it look more fun. It's what will give it more texture. If it's just rounded, it looks cool. Definitely it's a nice, delicate um, nail art. But if you wanna have more particular look to your petals, the second layer definitely adds, oh, that was unfortunate, um, adds a little bit extra. So how to do that? Let me zoom a little bit more. Uh, I will take a small amount of gel on the liner brush, not too much like before. And now decide where would you like to add the texture in your petal. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the center. It could be slightly to the left or to the right of this petal. I'm going to, for example, put it slightly to the right and I'm going to put the bubble from the outside, leave it there and delicately pull with the tip of the brush, the bubble towards the center and do it a little bit slower. So this amount of the gel can become a little bit thinner and thinner and thinner slimmer towards the center. Okay, you see how it's like a drop shape? Let's see from the side if you can see it. Let's flash cure it just to make sure. In the meantime, prepare your brush with another portion of gel, not too much. We don't want to have too much. And now this is flash cured. Let's make the same on another petal. So again, start from the outside, leave the major amount of gel there, and then pull with the tip of the brush a small portion of gel towards the center. If you feel like the gel didn't follow you, okay, let's pull it a little bit more. Okay, again, if you feel confident that you can do another petal at the same time, go ahead, otherwise flash cure it and then continue to make another petal. I know that here the temperature is good, so I think I should be good to make all of the petals in the same time and you see how easy it is I'm just taking a small amount of gel putting it on the external part of the petal leaving that part there and then just using a small amount to drag towards the center and this is what gives us this more textured glass like look so we're gonna cure it of course it's like the most simple flower that we can do in this style we can create so much more and much more textured and complicated, but I think this is a really salon user friendly one. So that one is curing right now for 10 minutes and this one in the meantime cured the third, first one we did. And now let's continue to our little part um, one. That actually, this one is just super easy. You practically um, can decide how many layers you wanna have, even if it's just one, it also looks cool. I'm simply gonna um, use, okay, a little bubble and apply it on every part of this low part. So maybe um, it's better if you don't make 
two small little part designs for for this particular effect because then it's you kind of sabotage yourself you're going to have much more work to do later you could also um, instead of using the texture for this particular one you could use um, shiny top coat and just do those little um, low part um, texture I don't know how to make those little effects with um, with that or just leave it like it was it was actually really cool as well so now I'm just following all of those shapes and and just giving a bit more glass like look bigger they are of course easier that's why I didn't do them a small tiny low part um, designs and here you could use a little bit shorter brush just to have better control over what the about the gel application and as you can notice I'm a practically applying uh, most of those elements at once but you will decide again how you feel about gel is it if you're seeing it moving if it see that it's flooding the surrounding area then it means that okay we should flush cure it and um, in between maybe for five seconds you could use also those LED torches they are also great so the client doesn't have to go back and forth in the lamp and that's it this one is ready let's just check if everything is good before we cure it and and then if you feel like you want to make some extra second layer on top of it of course we can maybe on some parts in the meantime here it would be probably nice to put maybe a pearl in the center i personally prefer to put pearls rather than rhinestones for this one because it's easier. Maybe a gold one. It's easier to put here a pearl than a rhinestone that it's a flat bottom. So let's say this would be a good size. And the texture gel is, works really well also for crystals application. So you can put here a little bubble of crystal gel, um, the texture gel. Okay, and you could even make the little center from the texture gel itself then clean the brush and I'm gonna see if I can pick up a little pearl with the brush itself oh I just lost it okay and put it in the middle of course we could have used also the wax tool but I took a little shortcut okay and just make sure that the texture gel nicely hugged I can I can like kind of pour um, pull it over the pearl so we can now that it's perfectly secured now we're gonna cure it and then our nail is ready so uh, as you see this is a really easy technique very um, fun because of colors and you could also use chrome powders here underneath that would be also really interesting you could put chrome on top of it maybe the next time um, I will prepare um, texture with chromes it's a lot of fun here I have one in fact um, like this I was playing with chrome and texture it's interesting looking so um, there's a lot of options okay so those were just examples of course i'm sure you uh, can create a lot of different um, options for this technique i hope you will enjoy working with it if you haven't tried it before and let me know if you have any questions about what we did i'm gonna look through all of the um, comments and answer if there is any question so Thank you so much for watching this live today and um, I'll see you on the next one. Have a nice afternoon everyone or evening. <laughs> Bye!